Folks, in this video, I'm really looking forward to hearing your feedback because uh, I want to see if a lot of you folks have the same mindset or think the same along the lines that I do in regards to certain types of things that you should have for emergency preparedness, specifically uh, small portable radios. And what I mean by that is radios that can pick up not only FM and AM, but your shortwave uh, radio frequencies as well. Now, Rudica sent me a couple of their radios to kind of look over and review and get my feedback on. And uh, I'm going to be looking for your feedback as well. Um, basically, they kind of sent me uh, this one here, which is more of a digital version of this analog version of their radios. Now, these radios, like I said, can pick up your normal AM and FM. Uh, they also have the capability of picking up shortwave uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, and some of them have a little bit more bells and whistles than others. But yet, these are kind of affordable compared to some of your larger systems that you may have that are maybe non-portable. Um, and what I like about portable radios themselves is specifically they can be on the go. If you're on the go, these radios can go with you. There's multiple ways to power them. Uh, and they have several options that will go over uh, back on the bench. Uh, but we'll look at this digital version versus the analog version. And I'm really curious in your perspective, which one would you choose? In the analog version, uh, you know, it has basically a dial and whatnot. And like I said, we're going to get close up on both of these radios and whatnot, uh, where you kind of got to, you know, dial it in and whatnot versus something along the lines of a digital version, uh, which has options of like actually storing things in your memory banks. Now, some people would opt for the old school versus the new school, but even with the old school, this does have a little bit of a twist to it. Um, I do have some presets set on both of them, and I'm going to show you a couple of things on, you know, different ways to power them uh, and kind of just get a, you know, a nice really close up look at them and, uh, and see uh, how they work in conjunction uh, versus each other and whatnot uh, and the easeability of these units. But the key thing is, is this something that you need in your preps? All right, folks. So let's look at the uh, first one here, uh, which is what I call the old school radio. Uh, and, uh, you know, you know, with your dial and whatnot here on the right hand side. Also, I wanted to do uh, show you that here on this, it does have a headphone jack uh, in case you're trying to, you know, listen more closely or you're just trying to be, uh, you know, you got your situational awareness. You don't want other people knowing that you have a radio and you're listening to it uh, and whatnot. Uh, that's always a plus. And uh, like I said, one, uh, I guess to say one pro to this unit, it does have a nice large speaker on here so you can hear very well if you're listening into your home. Um, and ironically, surprising with the old school unit, it does have a Bluetooth option, which is by switching this thing over here. And if you switch this button over, the Bluetooth is going to come on. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this thing on real fast and hit the Bluetooth so that I can turn this on by turning the knob. It's going to turn on that and you're going to see that. And when that's blinking, that's going to show you that it's looking for a Bluetooth speaker, a whatnot, and it's going to pair with that. And of course, in the instructions, it's going to give you more detailed instructions with that. Uh, but you can pair that to a Bluetooth speaker uh, and whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this thing back off real quick and switch it over to the radio section. And as you can see here, let me bring this up a little closer for you. You can see this is an FM, MW, SW, LW, four band portable radio. Now, a lot of people are going to ask what MW and, and uh, LW means. It, this is kind of like your middle and your lower bands and whatnot. And it's more of the AM frequency bands and whatnot. Uh, if you can see on the screen here where it says this is your SW, your shortwave. And these are kind of be more of your AM stations right here uh, with the MW and LW. Uh, like I said, I'm not super, I'm, I'm not a super, I guess you could say geek or nerd when it comes to radios and all, but you know, from all the research I've done and things that I've been doing myself, this is more of an AM frequency band. Uh, and of course it just kind of separates the two. And of course you have your FM band. Now uh, on the top of this radio, you're going to have this, this, your antenna right here. I don't know if you guys can see that there. Uh, your handle and whatnot, and I'm going to flip this over to the back so that you guys can see it. Um, you know, remember we were joking around not too long ago in a video that I did that who uses D batteries anymore? Well, there you go, folks. D batteries uh, for this unit here. It takes four D batteries, and this is what I like about this unit versus the smaller units is that these D batteries can definitely hold a lot more power in them for longer periods of time. Uh, so that being said, uh, you know, compared to some of the little smaller radios, uh, the D batteries do hold a lot more power for longer periods of time. They're all, they're all the same rating and whatnot, um, but all in all, they're going to last you a lot longer than, let's say, some you know double A's or triple A's would, at least from my experience. Now, I had this set on shortwave. Uh, I figure you guys don't need to listen to AM and FM. 
Um, and now I'm going to be completely honest with you. I'm going to I'm going to bring this antenna up here, and let me see if I could bring this out a little bit for you. There we go. Bring this out so you guys can see what I mean by this antenna. And this is a standard radio antenna, and I'm going to extend this antenna the best I can. Now there's certain positions uh, that you can put radio uh, antennas in for specific frequencies and whatnot, uh, like at an angle like I'm going to be doing here, and I'm going to extend that antenna as far as it goes. Uh, now I'm also inside a house, so of course my reception is not going to be good as if you were not in a house, uh, because of course the walls, the roofs, all that's going to prevent this from receiving, but I did locate one. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. Hopefully it's not too loud. Turn that on and bring it up. It's, uh, this is on the shortwave band. As you can see, I have it here on the shortwave. Let me get that up close right there. I have it set on shortwave. And I'm going to go ahead and bring up the volume a little bit. And try to tune this thing in. Now, this is in Spanish. But I'm still picking up, which is cool because I'm inside a house. I'm inside a house picking up a frequency uh, from another country speaking in Spanish. And I'm much of a huge radio nerd, so I don't know all the logistics of everything. But I thought it was cool uh, that, I can, that I can pick things up like that. And of course, when you're doing this, all you're going to do is move this very slow. Some people can move fast, and you'll hear certain things. I'll turn the volume up. And whenever you, I, I can kind of move fast with it when I hear like a specific sound. But there's also what I suggest folks do. Let me see if I can, there's that one. Is knowing where they're all at. But what you can do folks, just to turn this back off so I can hear me a little bit clearer, is you can basically, let me bring this up a little bit closer to the radio. Um, with these radios, it's, you can pick up all these different stations and whatnot. Of course, outside again, it's gonna be a lot better uh, with the antenna that I have. Uh, on this. Now this is one of those antennas that are built into the unit. It's just like your standard radio that you would see, I mean, all the way back to, uh, you know, the, the 50s and 60s and uh, maybe even longer than that, you know what I mean? Uh, just because radio frequencies have been around for quite some time. It's like one of the oldest forms of entertainment per se, uh, back in the day before TVs or social media or any of that stuff existed and whatnot. But all in all, like I said, it's, it's a small portable unit. You can charge this via AC as well, or not charge it, but use it via AC with the AC plug that comes with it, to plug that into, let's say, if you have a portable power station, um, or if you just have, if you have power, you're just kind of like, you know, using this to listen to and kind of get your frequencies. Now, back to what I was saying about online. Online, you can kind of get a directory, in which I suggest folks, uh, you know, screenshot it or print it out, of all the different frequencies in shortwave, and when a lot of some of the stations are active, how close they are to you, and uh, the reception, and it kind of gives you an idea of what these shortwave radio frequencies are. Of course, in a SHTF, you're going to find something a little bit different. So moving on from that one, let's move it over to the digital version of this radio. <clears throat> and uh, this one works a little different. As you can see, it's a little bit more fancier. Um, you still have this main knob for your volume. Uh, you have still the same aspect of where you can tuning uh, from the side. And if you look here, uh, this has an SD slot. Now, some people say, uh, or TF slot, sorry, for a card. And what you can do with that card, by putting that card in there, is record what you're listening to. So if you're listening to something that you want to go over and, and kind of like save that, you can use that option for that. So if something critical is happening and you want to record that information and share it with, let's say, uh, other folks, you can save that information and play that back with that card in there. It has a USB out on it as well, so you can use that aspect. And of course, it also has the headphone jack. Um, this one on the back here as well does D batteries. Um, I put a little bit more higher ND batteries in there. This is only three of them versus the other one that's four, uh, which you would think that they would probably add it, the additional one in there, but it probably, you know, they couldn't put it all in there just because four D batteries will probably last you a lot longer. And that's kind of why I went with the Energizer Maxes in there uh, versus, uh, you know, the cheaper batteries that I had in the other device. And like I said, this might not be, you know, super entertaining for folks, but, you know, I feel that having, like I said, these radios are super important. This one does have a clock on it and uh, down here when you look at the buttons this is where you're going to go from your you know the mw like i had discussed earlier and the the other one sw shortwave and fm so mw is going to be your am 
your shortwave, and your FM. Uh, this is also going to go between your radio here, this knob here, uh, to your TF or your, your card and your USB there to kind of switch between which one you want to access. You know what I mean? And of course, then you have your volume knob here and the screen lights up. You can see even with the batteries in there, which I thought was nice, um, that it shows me that the batteries are in there. If you guys can see that, um, there we go. You can see that they're, it's telling me that the batteries are charged in there. So it's nice to have that inclination on there. So if you just happen to be walking past this radio, you can see that the batteries, uh, the D cell batteries in there are nice and charged. And then if you look up here, this says radio. So like if I'm going to switch this over uh, to other things, it'll kind of give you an idea that what I'm using and whatnot. Um, and of course, these are your programming buttons. I'm not going to go too deep into this, uh, but it's, it's relatively easy to use because let me go ahead and turn it on. Let's, let's do that. Uh, so you can see that's on there now. Uh, let me turn the volume down. All the way down there so you guys can hear me. And uh, of course the screen lights up and it's on, it's going to tell me that it's on the shortwave. So it's letting me know what I have set up, you know what I mean, on there. So I thought that was nice too. Um, again, decent size speaker, very clear. And this also has, you know, alarm. This is how you record. You can push that down. Uh, and this is how you can scan through certain things. So I'm going to go ahead and open this antenna up and set it up the same way that I had the other one. Kind of pull that out there. I'm going to turn the volume up a little bit. Slowly go through different frequencies on there. Until you pick something up. Or, like I said, you can hold this button down. And it's going to scan. And it's going to scan the digital frequencies. Just like if you were trying to turn this knob back and forth. And you can kind of like until it finds a radio a station that's that's transmitting that it can hear that it receives, um, and of course then you can stop that, pause it, uh, and whatnot, and kind of so on and so forth. So you can do it by hand, you can do it by scanning, um, and then of course you also have your buttons that you have saved able to use. But if I want to go to uh, let's say memory two, I turn this up so you can see it. And if you look up here in the corner. I get that to show properly. As I skip through them, this is going to go through my memories. Three, four. You can see there. I was picking up that one. This is channel six, memory six. And ironically, folks, uh, this is an Asian channel. Uh, I forget if it's Korean uh, or whatnot, but it is an Asian channel. Just kind of scrolling through here. It's hard to hear that one. But you got to remember, like I said, we're in a home. I forget exactly how many stations I have stored in here. I think it's 15. Yeah. All right. So let me go ahead and turn that volume down so you can see that. And like I said, so you have the option to scan your radio stations uh, or you can just kind of push through them and once you have them stored in here. But like I said, with these, you can, let's say if you, you found a station, it's 12, you know, four, five, you know, that one, you can actually input that in there. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Uh, sometimes when I'm trying to describe things on how I'm doing things, uh, it can be a little bit confusing. Um, again, like I said, some people will just use this format. Um, but like I said, if you went to online and you have uh, a list of what you're trying to do, you can actually type those, you know, in and whatnot and see those codes. And if it's if that code does if, if that station doesn't exist, of course it's going to tell you. Uh, but I know stations like this do uh, and whatnot on the uh, shortwave frequency. I'm not going to go to the FM and AM because you know, playing any type of music on YouTube, you know how that goes, folks. Uh, it will uh, get you to a situation. Anyways, uh, just kind of like a brief overview in regards to these radios. Uh, and like I said, I, I, I like them. Uh, I like that they're very portable. I like that they take batteries. I like that, that you can also, you know, use different ways to listen to it. Um, so I'll be honest with you. My favorite is probably this one, the digital. Um, that's just preference because it makes things a little bit easier uh, to move maneuver faster. Now with the other one, if you're using this one and you can, once you know the stations you are and you can run through them really quick, 
So if you know like right around this area, you're going to be able to pick up that station. You can move over here. You're going to pick up that station. Uh, then it's great. Like I said, it just depends on what you feel is going to be the best situation for you. So either or, I think they're both good radios. I'm going to try to pull out a little bit here. They're both pretty decent radios. Uh, and like I said, I'm really looking forward to what you guys think. Uh, and which would you choose in regards to these type of radios? Uh, but I honestly think, folks, that everyone should have some form of radio, uh, be it whatever it is, uh, for being in the know, being in the know and knowing what's going on, uh, getting important alerts, uh, be it news, weather, uh, communications from other countries and whatnot. Um, I think this is truly beneficial. Now, uh, if you have one of the more high-end radios, you know, you're going to be able to reach distances. It's all about the antenna. Uh, and your atmospheric conditions and stuff like that. Anyways, let's bounce back to me. All right, so now that we kind of went over these radios, uh, I'm really looking forward to hearing your thoughts. Uh, and how important do you think radios are uh, when it comes to emergency preparedness? Because here's my thoughts on it and my final thoughts pr pretty much in this video in regards to why I feel that having a radio outside of your communications, which is I have some right over there. I'm just making sure I got my hand in the right area, you know, versus your comms. Uh, how important radios can be because when a disaster happens to strike, um, be it an SHTF or just a natural disaster in general, like we've been seeing with the tornadoes uh, in the Midwest and along all over the area with Mississippi and I think Tennessee and a few other places. Um, and then here in Florida during hurricane season, when things go sideways, power gets knocked out. So here's why I feel that having a radio is going to be super important because you want to be in the know and know what's going on in your area. Emergency radios, the, the weather station, NOAA, you know, those type of things to heed warnings, you know, especially when the power's out. Um, and if you have to retreat somewhere, you can't take this huge massive system, which I'm kind of working on building. I, I want a full-on ham, you know, shortwave setup uh, in my, I guess you want to call it a man cave or whatnot. But, um, but in general, I, I'd like to have something like this um, that I can take and kind of like listen to and kind of like know what's going on. You know what I mean? Because when you're in the know, it can benefit you tremendously outside of just being in the dark. And in, in the correct position, some of these radios can reach long distances on the shortwave radio band. Um, like I said, outside of your FM and AM uh, radio bands, but having that shortwave built into either one of these units to me is truly beneficial. And this is kind of why I think that having a small radio like this that's portable uh, on the go is nice. Now I know they make smaller little compact radios and stuff like that, um, but I like the way, uh, again, like I was talking about earlier, that you can stick D batteries in there um, and also some of the other uh, options with the digital version and what you can do with that uh, and how it works and whatnot. Anyways, folks, that's kind of my take on these radios by Redicus. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you think. And uh, do you think a, having a shortwave AM, FM, you know, uh, NOAA radio uh, is pertinent to emergency preparedness? Other than that, folks, remember, you are not alone. This is Gray Man. I'm out. I'll see you guys in a rebound. And God bless.